You want all the inside dirt? That's the muck. Coming from the Montgomery basketball experts? That's the mire. I'm Montgomery assistant coach Joe Bassford. I'm Montgomery head coach Chris Grundy. And this is the Muck and Meyer podcast. This is the Muck and Meyer podcast. This is the Muck and Meyer podcast. What is going on, everybody? Welcome to week three of the Muck and Meyer podcast. I'm Brandon Fury here with Mr. Keith Glock. Glock, how you doing? I'm good, Fury. How you doing? I'm good. We uh we the three and zero week this week. First first three game week. Um, let's start it off. We had a uh, Bridgewater only home game of the week in a dominating win where we put up eighty one points to just thirty nine. Rabio had twenty. Prescott had fifteen. Curry had fourteen, and Velocity had twelve. Everyone was scoring that that game. Um, really, all the games, but that one specifically. Um, then we went to Ridge, first in person away game for us. Um, seventy seven thirty five. Uh, Curry had twenty six, which tied for a career high. Rabio had fifteen, and Simborski had eight threes. Uh, uh, eight sorry, eight points with two threes. And then Friday. 69-50 over Linden. Prescott tied for a career high with 25. Seven threes for him. Rabio had 19. Curry had 18. Three absolutely dominating wins. Fantastic week for the Cougs. Uh, 6-0 on the season to start things off. Um, you know, a couple of ho-hum victories. Uh, you know, that's kind of, I guess, maybe indicative of how talented this team is that we talk about a couple of 40 point wins as ho-hum victories these days but uh that seems to be the the case uh you know when uh well at least it, it seemed to be the case for the first uh you know half dozen games or so of the season and uh and then friday um you know as we expected kind of the step up you know level in competition montgomery was just they, they were awesome Prescott was fantastic. Uh, you saw flashes of, of dominance on the inside from Chris Rubio. I, I was thoroughly impressed. It was routine at this point. It's we're, we're halfway through. Um, and it's just, it's 40 point wins are regular. 80 points is just regular. Um, so now we're going to bring it uh, our take of the week. Mr. Glock, you can go first. Thank you. You're so courteous. So <laughs> my, my take on that is this, uh, you know, and I think a lot of the, the students who are listening to this can probably relate when you're an upper middle school student, you graduate eighth grade, you're getting ready to go to high school and you have a lot of fears because you know that there's going to be a step up and you going into a whole new humongous building at Montgomery high school, uh, you don't know where to go. Where are my classes exactly? I know I took the tour, but like, uh, I don't really remember. What are my teachers going to be like? Is the work going to be a lot harder? I've done well to this point. Am I still going to, like, you're just thinking about everything that's possible. And you've prepared. You've, you know, you, you feel like, all right, I've done as much as I can to be ready for this point. And now you just got to go do it. And a lot of the times when freshmen walk in the building for the first time, they act like, well, freshmen. They're a little timid, you know, you can kind of see the fear in their eyes and they're moving a little slower through the hallways. And, you know, it takes a little while to get acclimated to the new high school building. So if we were to plop that analogy into this high school basketball season, uh, Montgomery for the first five games was the dominant eighth grader. And then they were coming to the high school for the game away at Linden on Friday. And unlike the stereotypical freshman who walks into the high school building and is a little timid and it takes them a little while to get used to things. They walked in like they owned the place, like a high school senior who had been there for four years, prepared as all heck, Dama took it to Linden in their place, capitalized on turnovers early in the game. Uh, you saw every time Linden tried to make a run, and and Linden shot the ball very well, especially from beyond the arc in the second half and, and most notably the fourth quarter. 
Montgomery was there to answer the bell. Matt Prescott, seven three-pointers, fantastic. Uh, Robio, a pair of huge dunks. And then, of course, Ryan Curry uh, finishing things off with a rainbow three-pointer. They were the senior uh, dominating, even though really they had only kind of been in the building for five minutes. That's my take of the week. Yeah, I like that. And, and but I mean, are we really surprised? Like this is a, is a veteran team. They're experienced for the most part. Um, and I, I'm, I, I expected it. I, I knew they were going to, they're, they're going to roll teams this year and it's not going to stop on last Friday. Um, so my take to that is they've been tested. Um, Linden was a good basketball team, um, great competition, and they they played well. You know, sometimes you get a good team and they play bad and you roll them, but they pl- they're a good team and they played well. Um, and the biggest thing to me was that Montgomery was up bit like big, and then it got to six. And it, and it might've got a, a little closer as well, but I, I vividly remember it got to six 33, 27. And then they just go on a run like, like it's nothing. Um, yeah. And they're able to win still by almost 20 when it's a six point game. They're up big comes to six. And then now it's still a big game. Um, they, uh, that I would say that was their game of the year to this point um, with, Probably play of the year with the alley oop dunk. Um, I it, it was unbelievable. Yeah, it's so much, and that alley oop play so much went into that. I'm 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 hopeful you'll you'll bring the fury with that uh, with that play in a little while. But uh, yeah, that was pretty fantastic. Speaking of bring the fury, we are going to bring that to you next. So stay here for it. That is coming up right now. First play from Bring the Fury this week was Ryan Curry Friday against Linden. He used his speed to blow by a couple defenders after a great defensive possession. And I just love the finish here. Elevated right at the rim over a couple defenders. Go check it out. Good. And the Cougs will track it down. Curry with pace crossing over into the lane. A scoop shot layup is up and good from the, the junior. Next play here on Bring the Fury was Josh Moore. He was able to stop uh, Lyndon Run, who just brought the lead into single digits, and he had an unbelievable reverse layup. Go check it out. Final series of plays here were both from Chris Rabio. He was unreal on these plays. First one being an alley-oop from Ryan Curry. Great pass, but an unbelievable finish. And then in less than 30 seconds later, he has an unbelievable drop step and just a dominant dunk. Go check those two out. Those are the best two plays we've that we've seen from Chris Bio and definitely the best two plays of this week. So here they are. And he'll come the other way. Prescott again. Does he do it? And no, he cannot. And boy, that would have been unbelievable. Curry forces a turnover. Grundy likely looking for a timeout. Prescott is hit no call. Curry's going to step in. Now he throws an alley open a dunk. Holy mackerel. What a great play from Curry. We are now going to bring in senior captain Noah Vlasage. Noah, how you doing, man? Doing well, Brandon. Thank you for having me. No problem. We are very thankful to have you on. So my first question for you, we've been talking about for probably the whole season now, what the identity of the team is. And if there was anyone on the team, coaches included, that I could ask, it would definitely be you. So do you see a specific identity for this team? Yeah. Um, so on offense, I think it's pretty obvious we like to run. Um, we are very well conditioned. We 
get the rebounds and we just go, we just run, um, try and get fast break points. Uh, you can see Ryan, JT, Matt, they love to leak out, get those layups. And we really pride ourselves on our matchup zone on defense. Um, we like to hold teams below 40 points or within like the 40 range, which we've done, we, uh, done a pretty good job with that. And, um, that's just our identity we run in transition and hold teams to 40 points. And we really, um, have done a good job doing that so far this season, and we hope to continue doing that. See, I feel like that I, – I completely agree, by the way. I feel like that is definitely your identity. But I feel like you guys can almost be whatever you need to be at any time. If you need to be a finishing team, like a slashing team, you can do that. If you need yeah. to be a shooting team, you can do that. If you need if you need to win a close one on defense, which you haven't had to do, but you can de- dev- I think you definitely can do it. And so that is kind of going to lead me in a little bit to the next question I have for you. I feel like you are able to provide offense whenever it's needed. I feel like you never, and knock on wood, you never really have a a bad shooting night. It's just either you're like 0 for 0 or maybe you're 5 for 5. And an analogy I have for that is is Vinny Johnson from the Bad Boy Pistons. Um, Mm -hmm. They call them the microwave because they'll just get hot in 15 seconds. How are you able to do that? Um, I mean, I don't know. Me and me and Matt Prescott, we've always talked about how we're, I guess, because we call ourselves uh, streaky shooters, you know, so when you're hot, you're hot. And when you're cold, you're cold. Um, luckily, I've been, I've been pretty hot this season, so I don't have to worry about the cold part. Um, but it just, you just sort of turn it on, just like a microwave. You just turn it on, you start shooting, you're feeling it. And you just keep it going. I feel like the the name microwave may have to stick around for you for uh, the rest of this year. <laughs> yeah, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so not only are you instant offense, but you're also a pretty important leader to this team, not just because you're a captain, just the energy you bring, what I've heard about how you are in practice, obviously not seeing it, but as a leader, how are you able to kind of keep the team's energy high and level-headed coming out of the half when you're up 20 almost every game at, 20, at half? Um, you just try and treat the game um, like we're not up 20, like it's a 0-0 ball game. Um, we don't want to get too ahead of ourselves. And uh, I just try and help the team like realize that any any team can come back. It doesn't doesn't matter who they are, if they have no wins or if they're undefeated. Any team can come back, and we just have to. When we're up by twenty at half, we just have to make sure that that doesn't happen and that we keep that lead and we destroy the team that we're playing against. I really really like that mentality. It's a mentality that I have as well in yeah. my football games. Yeah. It doesn't matter whether or not you're up. You guys have been fortunate enough to be up the whole yeah, time, but for sure. there could be a time when you guys are down 20. And how – I know there's you haven't done it this year yet, but how would you kind of plan to keep your team – what would you say to your team if you were down 20 at half? Um, the same thing I say to them when we're up 20 is it's a 0-0 ball game and we can come back at any moment. I mean, you've seen how hot – we can shoot. I mean, Matt Prescott just shot seven for 10 from three against Linden. Um, and I, I've shot pretty well this season. Ryan shot well, JT shot well, even Chris, he's shooting like 50% from three. So we can, we can really turn it on any moment. And being down 20, obviously we haven't been there yet, yet, like you've said, but if we were there, I have no doubt that we can come back against any team. Just And I just got to, you know, vocalize that to the team, make sure they know that, that we can do that. Now, kind of like a similar thing here. So we're playing Peberg this week, yep. um, a team that we beat pretty good the last time mm-hmm. we played them. Mm-hmm. How are you guys going into that game uh, and knowing that, look, it's hard to beat a good team twice. It's hard to beat any team twice. What's your mentality for that? Yeah, well, like the first question you asked about our identity, uh, we played them first game of the season and we didn't really know our identity yet. We didn't know how much we'd be running in transition. We didn't know how good our defense was going to be. Now, six games in, we've seen, like coaches told us, we've scored the most transition points of any team in his 20-year career or however long it's been. And, um, and our defense has been stellar. So 
now we really know our identity and going to this game, we feel much more confident. And Phillipsburg's a good team, but we beat them by a lot before and we just want to go in there. We want to get the job done and come out with another one. So when did you guys know your identity? When did you say, okay, like we're pretty, yeah. pretty good and we're pretty fast? Um, well, yeah, it's a good question. I mean, uh, coming out of Phillipsburg, we had a lot of transition points. Before even the season started, coach told us, he said, we're going to run in transition a lot. Like we've practiced a lot of transition drills. Every, every practice, there's a, some sort of transition drill. You're just running, getting the ball out, passing it up early. Um, and as the games have gone on, we've scored uh, an absurd amount of transition points. Ryan averages like five steals a game, which is unbelievable to me, but that's beside the point. Anyway, mm -hmm. um, we've scored a ton of transition points and we've really seen how effective it can be like teams like Ridge were very tired in the second quarter, third quarter, like they're on film. We looked and they were their best players are walking back because they played the full game and they just couldn't keep up with us. Um, so we really saw how effective running in transition could be. And we just sort of we we've utilized that ability and we've made it our identity. Yeah, I really I mean, I, I really have been very impressed with how you guys have a handled yourself and just be played the entire year. Is there anything like if you had to nitpick one thing, because again, like these are these questions I have, like, I feel like they're almost specifically for you as just a, a mm -hmm. huge leader on the team. And like, so, so how would, what would something you guys need to improve on be? Um, I mean, I, as you can show, sure you can tell from watching the games, I love defense. Um, and I think that our defense, it's been great. I think it could be so much better. I mean, we've gotten a little lazy with trying to go for steals and trying to get in the passing lanes and then our man cuts behind us or something like that. Just little stuff like that. And I think um, like we're playing teams that aren't to our level yet. So when we get to the tournament and we're playing, you know, central or watch on, we can't be lazy and so there's no reason to have that habit now. So I believe that our team could be, our defense could be on the next level. And um, if we just, you know, uh, refine like all those little um, mistakes that that could turn into bad habits, which we obviously do not want. Yeah, no doubt. Um, final question for you. How are you keeping the team, you know, motivated knowing that it's the little three game tournament and that's it. No state run, nothing like that. How do you, how do you keep your guys motivated? Well, uh, knowing when the end of your season is, is obviously a really bad feeling, but I mean, coach keeps telling us, you know, you, you never know when it's going to be your last game. You got to play like it could be your last. Cause we could get a call that, um, I don't know, anyone we just played Linden or something had COVID and we're shut down for two weeks. Who knows what it is. And so, um coach reiterates that any game could be your last and then in the lock or not in the locker room I guess when we're all together without coach or whatever me Matt and Chris um obviously it's, it's our last season so we make sure that everyone knows that we got to keep playing hard any game could be our last before the games we do a little huddle um just the players and uh, we just you know we say play your hearts out because you never know when we could get shut down so that that really uh, motivates, you know, the underclassmen um, to really work hard during practice and in games. I love that mentality. Uh, thank you so much for coming on, Noah. Uh, sure. Unbelievable start to the season. Uh, hopefully it keeps going. Yep. Thank you for having me. Thanks, man. We're going to bring back in Mr. Keith Glock for our like and dislike, and then we are going to preview next week. Uh so, Mr. Glock, why don't you go first? What'd you like from this week? Uh, my like was sharing. Uh, you know, the old, I mean, I'm an educator. Sharing means caring. Uh, we, we saw Montgomery share the basketball, you know, and they always share the basketball, but it was the manner in which they were sharing the basketball, especially against Linden, that impressed me. Uh, it was very obvious, their level of preparation, the... Uh, you know, the ball pressure that Lyndon applied 
made it such that Montgomery needed to be aware of where the outlets were and those passes needed to be made on time. And the pace at which the basketball was shared against Linden was impressive. It was clearly scripted. And I was impressed. And, and I, I too was impressed with, uh, with the kind of no hiccups. Like at, at no point were they confused with where they needed to go and what they needed to do in order to escape the Linden pressure. And it resulted obviously in a nearly 20 point victory. Yeah. And similar to that, in a way, I just, I, my like was literally everyone is scoring. If you got a minute, you were getting a point. Um, to simplify the game, you win by scoring more than the other team. And when everyone's scoring, that's you're, you're going to win a lot of games. What I didn't like was from the week we, cause I, I, you know, I feel like the other two games, just because of how much they were blowouts, we're kind of neglecting them a little bit. So I'm going to go back to both of those games with my dislike and it's kind of nitpicking a little bit because there wasn't much to dislike when you win by 40, 40 and 20, but we are getting out rebounded at times. Um, whether it's with just Rabio, just Gordy, or even both. Um, and I know we were talking about it in those two broadcasts, but if you get out rebounded against the wrong team, they will finish those. And Linden wasn't the biggest rebounding team. So we did out rebound them. So we, it wasn't like a chance where we saw like, okay, here's what happens when you get out rebounded. We haven't seen that yet, but what we, we have seen, sorry, what we haven't seen is the other team out rebounding us and finishing, but we have seen us get out rebounded. So if I had to dislike something, it would definitely be that. My dislike would be, uh, you know, my, my first thought was our ability to finish at the rim. Um, and there are times when I, I've seen, you know, opportunities there that I'm like, man, we're just, we need to finish that. That seems like it should be two points easily. And then as I thought about it a little bit more, I was thinking it's more of the, maybe the tenacity factor. Like when I think back to a guy like Kyle Maripoti, right. You know, and, and you want, and Will Maripoti, sorry. And, and we look backwards and, and say like, that kid didn't take any crap from anybody. Like he was a monster and he was five foot five. You know what I mean? They just played with this tenaciousness that, you know, and some spunkiness uh, that is grating and annoying to the other teams. And now if you were to put that kind of an attitude into the body of like an Aryan Gordy underneath, you know, the times when he has, you know, grabbed a very nice offensive rebound. And then where I want him to just like nasty go up like, and, cr and create that contact rather than going up, you know, maybe a little more tentatively than what we would like. Uh, and then seeing his shot get blocked or altered, um, you know, I, I mean, I'm not going to be upset if your elbow is sticking out a little bit on the way up, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, you're six foot eight, six foot nine, um, you know, go up there and be that guy, you know, that we've seen Rubio turn himself into. Um, and, and I think that there's certainly a, you know, sometimes a strength component to that, but Maripoti wasn't, I mean, yeah, you know what I mean? It, mm -hmm. It's not like he was a, a bodybuilder, but yeah. you know, and, as I, and, I, think and tenacious. We, I think we missed a little bit of that from losing Marco Linez. Um, he definitely brought that, and that's definitely something that I haven't replaced. So now we are going to preview next week. It is another three-game week. We have Middletown North, not Rutgers Prep, now going to be at 7 o'clock at home. Um, Meyer will be there, of course. Um, then on Thursday, we travel to Peaburg. Well, the team travels. We will be remote broadcast at 7 p.m. as well. And finally, we will have our first Saturday game, I believe, right? Yeah. Yep. Against Hillsborough at 1 o'clock at Hillsborough. Um, Meyer will be there in person for that. Uh, and I'm looking forward to it. Um, Peberg, we 
already played. Um, and we'll we'll see how they adjust to us. Um, I always say it's hard to beat a good team twice. Um, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, Burrow Montgomery is always going to be a close game no matter what. Um, and it's a shame we don't get to play Rutgers prep, but Middletown North, they're going to come to play. Yeah, Middletown North, uh, there's pluses and minuses to, to that game on Tuesday. Obviously, the minus is you don't get to play a team as talented as Rutgers Prep, which uh, for this Montgomery team, obviously, you know, you want to play the stiffest competition that you can. Um, but as I try to shine the positive light on things, Middletown North is a team that we don't know very well. It's not like a team that we play, you know, every year. Um, you know, no doubt the coaches will watch tape, but anytime that you can play a team that you've never seen before, an element of unknown creeps in, which um, I, I think builds character, you know, for a team. So uh, Montgomery, obviously not really phased by that as, as we saw on Friday. Um, so I don't expect that part of it to be super impactful, um, but it's just experientially something that you like and, and they have a winning record so far on the season. So, um, you know, we'll see what happens there, but uh, then, as you said, uh, round two against Peterburg and then uh, border war on Saturday, uh, you know, you, rivalry games, um, no matter what the records say, you know, can always go one direction or the other, just because of the nature of, of how emotion and especially teenage emotion goes. You know that. Yeah. Um, most definitely. Hopefully they can revenge uh, Burrow from the football loss. Um, but in any event, that is all we have for you today, folks. Uh, I am Brandon Fury with Mr. Keith Glock. Thank you so much for listening and watching, and we will see you Tuesday night. Don't forget to subscribe on Apple Music, Spotify, Google, Pandora, or wherever else you may get your podcasts. The episode from this week will also be posted on YouTube, so make sure to go drop a like there and subscribe. See you next week, folks.